So just a video where I'm going to show you how to use SEMrush to do a website audit. Quite a cool feature on their website and it's something I use every day of my working life um, and it helps me iron out problems with websites. So what I've done was I posted a message on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, asked people who wants their website audited and I had a chap called Dave Kane from Nottingham. Um, so he's a digital marketing guy based down in Nottingham um, and has been around for quite a while according to his blog and um, we can see that he's got archives going back to 2010 so he's been around for not far off seven years um, and hopefully um, this <coughs> allows us the opportunity to do a website um, audit on a website that you know has several hundred pages rather than you know some five page website so what you do is obviously you have to have SEMrush to do your audit. Um, so you're going to log into your dashboard here. Um, it's going to look like this. So what you want to do to start the website audit is go to projects, go to projects list, and you just click add new project. Stick in the domain name which is davekane.co.uk and the project name can be anything you want. I'm just going to put Big Dave Kane in for a laugh. Um, just to show that it doesn't really matter what you write here. You just click save and then go up to site audit. Click setup and <coughs> what we'll do is we'll crawl 500 pages of Dave's website. Now, crawl source, I always just leave that as website. You don't need to touch that setting. Down here, you've got a little tick box which you can untick. Um, and what that does is obviously anytime the tool does an audit for you, it emails you just explaining that your website audit's complete and obviously gives you the opportunity to download that um, in your email um, inbox. You also have here crawler settings. Now, to explain what this does is you can obviously crawl the website as the same rush bot, both desktop and mobile. And you can also crawl the website um, as the Google bot, both desktop and mobile. Um, now, <coughs> to explain why people often ask what do you use what one do you use now below this video and um, I've I've done two um, audits of this website one is the same rush desktop bot um, and one is the Google desktop bot um, just so that you can compare there isn't a huge amount of difference if I'm being honest um, however what one thing that's quite a uh, it's not, I wouldn't consider it technical, but what people can do so that you can't use a competitor analysis tool like SEMrush is block the SEMrush bot. It's quite common for someone to go into the robots text and block the SEMrush bot or the Ahrefs bot or any other bot for that matter that you know people will use to audit particularly, you know, someone's website. So someone with a good technical knowledge would use the robots text to stop the same rush bot from crawling or indexing a website. Now I would say there's only a fraction of people out there that's you know going to do that. However, it is there. Um, but what that person can't do is block the Google bot from the website. Um, so you can use Google bot to crawl the website here as well. Um, and obviously that would bypass you know the the same rush bot being blocked. Um, so you can use either or. They both give <coughs> very similar scores. Um, and yeah, both both good. Um, you can also, there's another wee add-on here where you can allow or disallow certain URLs when you're doing your site audits. So if you don't want certain URLs to be included in the audit, then you can disallow them by doing this, um, you know, adding the URLs in here. Um, but to start a site audit, you just click Start Site Audit and, <coughs> you know, the, the tool will start to prepare to crawl. Um, and do its work. Now the same rush bot is really aggressive. It flags up error after error after error. I find it a very good bot um, and a great tool because not only does it do quite an aggressive job in terms of flagging up errors, it's also something that you can show to a customer by simply exporting as a PDF which is great because we all know within the SU industry that customers um, want to see what you're doing and you know when you're doing a site audit and you're doing some technical fixes the customer wouldn't know what half of this stuff means anyway but it's always good to document this stuff to to cover your your back and obviously justify what you're doing so when a site audit's done you'll get a score 
Dave scores 73% and it's obviously got 214 pages um, with issues. <coughs> now, I'm just going to click on this and it will flag up the audit overview. Now, if I wanted to, you can click PDF here and download this whole site audit. Um, you can download the overview of the full site audit report, export to PDF and obviously send on to a client if you want to justify what you're doing. But obviously that's not what this particular video is about. It's all about the site audit. So we'll crack on with that. Um, so obviously the overview is going to flag up errors, warnings and notices. It's obviously got some other wee features here such as issues, crawled pages. It will show you all the pages that are crawled. It will obviously show you your site structure. Um, you also have <coughs> statistics that you can use for one reason or another. You can obviously compare crawls. So if you're doing regular site audits, you can obviously compare it to your last site audit and see if you've got more or less errors or whatever's going on. And obviously there's a nice wee progress chart here as well that you can uh, use as something that's graphical and something you may maybe want to show to a customer. Um, so what we're going to do is obviously talk you through the audit. So I'm just going to cover these wee things here first. Crawlability, 88%. Obviously, some pages couldn't be crawled for one reason or another, which we'll go into later on in the audit. You don't have your HTTPS implemented on the website, so that's obviously your SSL certificate. Um, so you do want to have a look at that and, and get that installed. Um, and you've not got any international SEO implemented on this website. And I wouldn't expect so. You know, you're an SEO in Nottingham, so I wouldn't expect you to be, you know, doing um, any kind of international targeting at all. So what we're going to do is just check on some of the errors and warnings and notices. So this gives you a nice dashboard here showing you what errors your website's got. Um, so you've got a broken internal link. No one wants broken links on their website at all, whether that's internal or external. All your errors will flag up here. And it shows you what link that is as well. And it's obviously returning a 404 error. Um, so obviously there's, there's an issue with that particular URL and it's obviously up to you by using this audit to go away and rectify that. Um, one <coughs> page couldn't be crawled, that's just the home page that always comes up. Um, robots text file has format errors. Now this particular website, your 404, eh, sorry, your robots text file redirects onto your 404 page. No idea why anyone would do that, but your robots text file isn't there and it's a WordPress website, so it should really be there, and it should be the sort of default robots text file um, you would expect to see in a WordPress website. So that obviously has been edited for one reason or another, something you do want to obviously rectify. Um, you also have <coughs> another page that flags up a 404 error, which is this URL here. Again, you don't want to have 404 errors on your website. So if you can eliminate that, what will happen is your website score will go up. So you want to eliminate as many errors and warnings and notices as you possibly can. In terms of warnings, you are not tagging any of your images. Now Google can't crawl, eh, sorry, Google can't see what an image says on it. So what it does is obviously crawl, crawls the code on your website and obviously the alt text is what Google uses to determine what that image is. Um, it's just good housekeeping to make sure that all your images are tagged. Um, now, you've got 50 links that contain a nofollow attribute. Now, by having the nofollow attribute on your page means that you're telling Google um, that, you know, that that page is just not to be followed. Now, these are some of your blog posts. Now, I'm not sure in terms of the structure of your website why that's you know there. Um, so obviously it's telling you here, no follow links, don't pass any link juice to the referred web pages, and that's why it's not rec it's not recommended that you use no follow attributes in internal links. Um, so you obviously want your internal link structure to to be set up properly. So I would have a look at that and make sure that you do resolve that problem. You've also got 23 pages that use Flash, and again, Google have a problem dealing with Flash content. Uh, it can't crawl or index it. Um, and I know Flash can sometimes look really good, but you do want to try and resolve that and give Google what it wants, which is, you know, text and stuff like that. So um, it obviously tells you here why why to fix it. it. You know, it can negatively impact your website's visibility because it can't be properly indexed and crawled by the search engines. Um, so obviously, Flash content also can slow your website's performance down. 
Um, and yeah, it just it doesn't work well on mobile devices, so there's no real reason to be using too much flash on your website. Now, you've also got another thing here. Four pages have a low word count. SEMrush has a, a rule in place where pages that have under 200 words on it um, is classified as a page with a low word count. Some of the pages that you have low word counts on are your contact page, your download page, and, and so on. These pages don't really have to have a whole heap of content on them, but obviously your home page, you do want to, to have more than 154 keywords on there. Um, oh, sorry, 154 words. So <coughs> I would look at, you know, dealing with your home page anyway. Your downloads page and your contact page, you know, is irrelevant. They're not there to rank well, so you can obviously um, ignore those ones. Um, three pages have too much text within the title tags. So most search engines uh, will allow you, I don't know why it's saying 75 characters or less. Um, it's obviously, I've always used the 60 characters um, as part of my thought process. Um, but obviously you want to try and keep it as low as you possibly can to dilute the impact that you are so that you're not diluting the impact that your title tag has. Obviously, you've got your name on your title tag here, here, and stuff like that. You know, there's no need to repeat your page, your name on a Google Penguin update page. Um, so, you know, you can't, you don't have to feature in Dave Kane. You know, I would keep your title tags very much keyword focused. Um, so, you can obviously see what pages have got a problem there. Now, your sitemap.xml is not indicated in your robots text probably because your robots text file is broke just now. Um, I've, I've established that from earlier on um, in the site audit. Um, now you've got one page that has a low text to HTML ratio. That particular page in your website is a Whiteboard Fridays blog post where you've got something like four or five videos and a very small amount of text. So there's more text than code on that page and that's not always a good thing. But, uh, you know, Google likes text. I can see your point in having the five videos. So it's up to yourself whether you fix that or not. You know, that page might not be designed to rank well, but again, any page that's designed to rank well, you want to ensure that you have enough text on it. Now, you've got <coughs> one page that has no RF Lang and, uh, and Lang attributes. It tells you that that's your sitemap.html. I'm not sure if that's an error, because it should be sitemap.xml um, on your website, but you've got an HTML sitemap there. Um, what I would probably suggest to resolve that problem would be to use something like Google XML sitemaps plugin, and you will rid yourself of that warning, because um, your website doesn't have any international targeting on it, so um, yeah, just that, but I would just, it's up to yourself, but that's not a major issue, that one. One page doesn't have a meta description, and it's your sitemap.html. Again, your sitemap doesn't need a meta description. Again, if you use the plugin uh, Google XML sitemaps, you will rid yourself of that problem. And, yeah. Um, one page is a temporary redirect. Now, this is the worrying one. Your robots text file... <laughs> um, redirects onto your error 404 page. Not sure why anyone would ever have this. There can be no benefit to having this and it's something you do want to fix. Make sure your robots text file doesn't have a redirect on it and that it's just a standard robots text file. And then from there, if you want to implement any other kind of technical changes to your robots text file, then you can do so from there on in. But then you know what, you can Get the standard robots text file for WordPress online and um, just by Googling it. So you want to sort that out. So that's another error. Uh, or another warning, sorry, that I think that was the last one. Oh sorry, in the last one you have your homepage doesn't use HTTPS encryption, which is obviously the SSL certificate. Um, and as I said earlier at the start of the audit, you do want to make sure that you've got an SSL certificate on your website. Otherwise, when it comes to the October Google Chrome 62 update, your website is going to be flagged as not secure and that may scare people off. So you do want to have a wee look at installing your SSL certificate. And on that subject, because you're on WordPress, 
all you really need to do is go to your host, get them to install an SSL certificate, and there's a really cool plugin called Really Simple SSL, which is a plugin which will change all your URLs, your uploads folder, everything to HTTPS for you. Um, so there's no real technical you know, problems when implementing the SSL certificate. So go ahead and do that as soon as you can. That would be my recommendation. Now, something else you've got here is uh, notices. So you've got 105 pages blocked from cr crawling. Now, what that's a normal WordPress thing where all your category pages are blocked from you know being crawled. It's just a standard WordPress feature, nothing at all to worry about because obviously um, that's just the category part. Obviously your blog and your affiliate marketing page uh, is, is the URL and obviously as, as part of the WordPress permalink structure, you've got a category part here as well, but you know they don't need to be crawled and they don't need to be indexed by Google. So I wouldn't worry about that particular notice. Um, <sighs> 1,711 external links contain no follow attributes. I would guess that you've got the kind of no follow plugin on your website there. Every single link you are um, given on your website is no follow. Um, and whether that's a good or a bad thing, I'm not sure. You know, you obviously want to pass some juice to other people and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that, that's obviously up to you whether you want to have that amount of external links with no follow attributes. Obviously, what you don't want to do is drain the power of your website by linking out to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Um, but, uh, you know, that that's something you obviously want to make sure is all done appropriately um, because, as I say, um, you're telling, you know, the crawlers not to follow the link and not to pass any link juice. Um, and... Yeah, so you don't. You, the, the, it's saying here the unintentional use of no follow attributes may have a negative impact on the crawling process and your rankings. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I can get why you've got these on here, but it's up to you whether you want to take them off or not. You can pass just up or don't. It's up to you, up to yourself with that one. Um, so that is basically how you would do a website audit. Obviously, there's more to a website audit process. Obviously, someone doing a site audit is going to use their head, you know, their experience and stuff like that. They're obviously going to check out your website speeds, um, mobile-friendly stuff like that as well. Um, and, yeah, there's a whole heap of stuff. Obviously, I check out where a website's hosted. But, you know, in terms of doing a SEMrush audit, that is what you do. And, and it's quite an important tool um, on my day-to-day -day business life. And... It's quite clean and tidy in terms of reporting to clients as well. And this PDF is a wonderful thing. But in terms of your website, Dave, um, you know, I do think you also have to sort a few of those errors out there. Um, but overall, 73% is not a bad score. I think you could obviously get that up a fair bit by eliminating some of these problems, which will probably get you up to the 85 or 90% range. Um, but I do also appreciate that as a digital marketing guy, you may not always have time to do um, stuff on your own website as client work would normally always come first. So, yeah, not, not a bad website. Obviously, a hell of a lot of content on it. Um, few wee errors, few broken links, stuff like that. But overall, I think your real issue here um, is the main thing is not tagging your images. Everything else seems to be in reasonably good shape. There's the odd problem here or there. And obviously your use of flash and um, so my only real recommendation would be to sort these wee minor things out and obviously install a an ssl certificate and uh, yeah continue keep up the good work and continue posting you put a seven years worth of effort in um, and yeah so not a bad website overall all right cheers